Hello, um, this is Jessica Garten and the topic of my presentation is um, using iPods for um, promoting independent learning in the special education classroom. Um, I'm an intervention specialist and I have students in grades kindergarten um, through fourth grade and um, this year I started with um, five iPods in my classroom um, for the first time. They were um, given to me and they were assigned to my room um, and I would be t I was told that um, they would be mine and the students would be able to use them um, for instructional purposes and um, I wouldn't have to share with anyone so this piqued my curiosity um, as to what um, purposes and instructional uses I would be able to do with them. Um, I've used my own iPad for uh, personal um, reasons, but I've never used it for instructional purposes. So um, I've had to really do some exploring as to what apps I could use and how to really get the most out of these devices in a small group setting. So at first um, for the capstone, I really didn't know where to start. And um, once I got started, I really had to kind of tone things back because there was so much that I could do um, once I got some uh, good information and some good leads. And one app led to another, and my students have really um, got some great uh, resources from these. So uh, I've got some great sites to share, and I hope that um, you find something you can use as well. Um, so I'll start with my um, the front of my capstone page and the um, the heading I felt like kind of summarized the goal for my capstone um, can these devices meet the needs of our 21st century learners um, I felt like most of the research I was coming across was either on one end or the other either in support of using a mobile device and um, embracing everything that they can do or banning them and keeping them as far away from the classroom as possible and then putting students in charge of their own learning um, the whole idea of flipping the classroom um, putting our students in charge um, taking more of the facilitator role and really putting students in charge of their own learning. Um, so using the iPods to develop independent learners, enhancing engagement in instruction and curriculum, and increasing student achievement. So in summary, um, I've used these in a small group setting. Um, I have five devices in my own charging dock. Um, basically, I wanted to discover any ways that I could enhance the learning process, give students opportunities to manage their own learning, and me to be more of a facilitator. Um, I wanted to discover any new ways to use the devices. Um, the groups that I have right now are reading and math, um, K to 4. So it is a wide variety of ability, a wide variety of um, kids that are coming with previous technological background. Um, some kiddos have their own devices at home, some have never used any devices at all. So um, that was also a learning process as well, getting students adapted to using the devices. Um, the rationale behind the project, um, our district and building goals has aimed to increase students um, using technology. Um, our school was a school of honor last year, um, but we've also wanted to make sure that we're emphasizing the, um, while we do have that high achievement, um, we are wanting to make sure that the economically disadvantaged and students with disabilities are accessing technology at school as much as possible because they may not be able to access that at home. Um, the iPods that I have in my classroom, the K-2-2 teachers, K-2-2 
K1 and 2 also have five in their own classrooms. And then we have a iPod um, lab of 25 as well. So we are very lucky to have a lot of these available for small group settings. And uh, many of these students um, do get a lot of experiences with them. Um, the goals and standards um, are included here. I won't go through all of those, um, but there are uh, many technology goals, as many personal goals as well, um, content standards. Um, but the personal goals for my own learning were um, beginning with introducing the iPods to the students, um, just more building the background of using the technology, just basic turning them on, how to use the simple apps and moving to the different screens. Um, I felt like the students needed to be comfortable using them before we could get really into using the different apps. Um, and then once that was established, um, I started with something more basic um, with uh, some of the links that I'll get into. Um, but as I got down to the further um, dates, I ended up exploring other sites that aren't even included on my goals just because I found so many resources. Um, it says to explore other sites um, such as Twitter and um, I think I ended up adding two or three more past this as well. So. Like I said before, there were so many things that I discovered that one thing led to another and I ended up taking away much more than I thought. Um, the impact for my students, um, I wanted to be able to make this more of a collaboration tool, um, not only for um, myself but for the students as well. I wanted them to be able to collaborate with each other. Um, under additional media, um, I've included some pictures from the project. Um, there is a slideshow. We did a Twitter page, um, so at Mrs. Garten's class is our Twitter. Um, the students had a Twitter app on the iPod. Um, sometimes they would post pictures of their work, so whatever we were doing in reading group. Um, so, for example, we were reading a book um, using um, context clues. They were figuring out a word that they didn't know, and they would, um, you know, determine the meaning of the word and then write the, um, fill in the clues that they used and then match that to a picture from the text. And the picture that they found, they would write their answer take a picture of that and they could post that to the Twitter page and then that way they were all able to view each other's answers. Um, all of the pictures that are scrolling now, some different word work. Um, all of these are K-4 to four again so they're various um, skill levels. I'm going to pause on one of those. On Intervention by Design, I would use um, the quiz I would put on the smart board and the students would see the quiz and they would put the answers into the iPod and they would then just email the answers to me right from the iPod so they weren't taking a paper pencil test. Um, even though the test was being projected onto the smart board and it was the same test they would have taken um, before. Um, just being able to use the notes app and send the answers in an email um, number 1a number 2b being able to do it that way made it seem like it was uh, more fun for them we were using less paper and they were able to um, incorporate technology into their day um, I also found this as an interesting way to communicate with parents. We had a couple of parents who were able to check um, their kiddos work during the day. Um, so that was a fun way for them to be able to just watch what we were doing. Um, farther down, there's just some pictures from around the room. 
Um, some of our um, fluency assessments are included. Uh, the kiddos were using the iPods. Um, there's a voice memo app. And one way that they were using them to read independently was to just um, record themselves reading. And then they would send it to me and um, listen to themselves reading back. I would be able to save it and keep it in a file on iTunes and have it uh, for myself later, but I could also use this for RTI purposes and share it with parents at conferences. Um, but then this file is the K1 and some second graders would use this one as well for a self-fluency assessment. So after the kids have read, they would use this to assess themselves on how well they scored based on those different um, indicators. And there's also one included for grades 3 and 4. So same concept, just different wording, different indicators based on our report card. Um, and then included is a YouTube video um, just on iPods in education. Um, if you also go into additional media and links to websites, this is where a majority of my um, other sites are that were used. The students were very independent with most of these, and this is also where I began to explore other sites. Um, PollEverywhere.com, Twitter, this is our Mrs. Garten's class homepage, um, Intervention by Design Data Management Tool, Bookshare.org, um, Class Dojo Behavior Management, Spelling City, Google, uh, Google Drive, Class Dojo Live Form, Teacher Monster to Read, and Edmodo. And then I also included um, a survey down below. Um, so I'll go through these. Um, but before I do that, um, there's a link here which just includes um, some of the articles um, that were used for my research that I just thought were the uh, more interesting of the articles. Um, there's also a link um, for contact. I plan on using the site um, after the capstone is ended um, for parent contact just because I've found the site to be uh, much more user friendly than I had thought. Um, so I plan on keeping it. The blog is also here. These students were able to access the blog on the iPod. They ended up using other sites more frequently, but one student was able to respond on here for a vocabulary response was what they were supposed to respond either on Twitter or on the blog um, about what they had done in the morning and this was just one day when we had um, started I think it was like the third day that we had been using the iPod so just to kind of see how well the students had um, become acclimated with using the iPods on their own and she put this morning in Mrs. Jenkins class I did a vocabulary review so she had become familiar with getting to this site and then under more I've included a class document uploader um, I had a parent indicate that it would be nice when her student was absent to have a place where she could um, send homework and this was just a neat thing that I found on Weebly where she could upload um, a file and it could be sent directly to my email. So on part two I will go through the links to the different websites that my students have used on the iPods and how they've been successful using those different websites.